Good evening, everyone. It's a, a joy to be able to share uh, with all the saints that are online. Glory be to God. I was given the topic of understanding the power that raised Christ. And the text or the verse, the guiding verse, is from Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 11. I would like to read through Romans chapter 8, verse uh, 11 to verse 21, and then I will share the insights that I have picked from this text. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in me and you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation but is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with okay. our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And as I share the insights from this text with your children, Spirit of the living God, take over and minister through me to us this evening, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, the key word that I saw in the title of the message this evening is raised. And uh, of course, the raising was of Christ. Christ who came to reverse the impact and effect of Adam's rebellion and disobedience. And so, as I share, keep in mind that word raised, because in it, I saw that it points to <clears throat> resurrection, a veiled irreversible sharing of eternal dignity. The power that raised Christ is understood from the perspective of knowing that sin had brought death, and death is a decaying of what God had intended to be of eternal value. So the power that raised Jesus Christ is the power that God provided out of his love and mercy and kindness to bring about a reversal of the impact of death. For death came to oppose everlasting life. 
Sin came to oppose what had been good in God's appraisal after creation. And so the power that created in the first place is the power that God made available when recreation, that resurrection uh, is a symbol of, was put in effect when Jesus Christ was raised from the grave. Hallelujah. Resurrection marked a significant a defeat of the forces of destruction and no other than the Holy Spirit who was present at the dawn of creation was present to exert power, the power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave. And because of Jesus Christ's resurrection, possibility of being God's children, children who are born of the Spirit, not of the willing and uh, involvement of the flesh, which is weak and frail and subject to death. This is why the Spirit of God inspired Paul to write that we who are in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, who raised Jesus from the dead, and who is alive now, he is, that spirit is able to raise us when we die and give us life and give life to our mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Uh, you are aware that the scripture says that you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And as the temple of the Holy Spirit, we are the church of God who watches over what belongs to him. We are children of God, not by money might, not by uh, political power clout, not by intellectual uh, uh, smartness, but by the will of God who sent his son Jesus Christ to die for us uh, so that we who uh, submit and surrender to him are able to live not for ourselves, not for the world, not for the flesh, but to live as sons of God who are led by the Spirit, as verse 4, 14 says, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And we received the Spirit and the possibility of accessing the irreversible sharing of eternal life because of the gift the gift that we received from God, as verse 15 says, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him, we cry, Abba, Father. This is why Jesus Christ told his disciples and all of us when they asked him upon seeing him praying, as we see in Luke chapter 11, that they watched Jesus praying and they desired to be like him. And they asked him to teach them how to pray. And Jesus said that when you pray, this is how you do it. Start by saying, our Father who is in heaven. By teaching that, Jesus showed that we have the blessing of being God's children. Children who can approach him and pray, asking him to forgive us our sins because sin is 
an affront, is an offense to God our Father. And it is the Holy Spirit who convicts us of sin and of righteousness and brings us to repentance when he convicts us as Jesus Christ taught in the Gospel of John chapter 14. And so when we pray, we pray asking God to deliver us from evil as Christ saw it, having himself dealt and battled with the evil one who led him into the wilderness, or rather who found him in the wilderness where the spirit had led him uh, for being tempted and uh, being given an opportunity to triumph over the evil one so that he would become a savior for you and I who are given the right to become children of God. And so in the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us to pray as God's children, therein lies how we can live lives controlled by the Holy Spirit, lives that put to death the misdeeds of the body, and lives that live in fellowship and in communion with the Holy Spirit. We give glory and thanks to God for having chosen to give us Jesus Christ, his son. That is the core of the gospel in John chapter 3, verse 16. For we will never tire in confessing that, that for God so loved the world, the world that is habited, but inhabited by you and I, sinful people, that whosoever believes in Jesus should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Jesus taught in the gospel, the same gospel of John chapter 5, verse 24, that he who believes in Jesus Christ, the solution and the way out of sinfulness, that whoever believes in Jesus Christ is given the capacity by the power of the Holy Spirit to cross from death into life. When Jesus was teaching that, he was introducing us to the reality that his resurrection from the dead would make available for all who believe. And it is a sheer indication of the magnitude of the goodness of God. That's all it takes for you and I to be given this position of irreversible sharing in the glorified state or status of the risen Lord Jesus Christ is simply an surprisingly believing, believing in Jesus Christ. And that's why we ask that we must make our faith sure that we must not allow doubt in the Son of Jesus, in the, in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, to have room in our lives. We must live knowing that we were loved and we were given this gift by God, who James talks about in chapter 1, verse 17 and assures us that all good and perfect gifts come from our Father, who is the Father of the heavenly lights, in whom there is no shadow of turning. And therefore, this is the Father that Paul is saying, we cry out to and say, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, who is in heaven who gave us that Holy Spirit so that through him we can address him, 
in the blessed assurance that we are his because of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. We are to praise the Lord for the power that raised Jesus Christ because that is the power that allows us to have that assurance by faith that we are children of God and that not only are we children of God, that we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. I say that sharing in the glory of God, Son Jesus Christ, is what I did the, refer to as sharing of eternal dignity. Because the glory of God that you and I are invited and allowed to partake of through the power of the Holy Spirit is that which removes what the indignity of death had brought, what the indignity of decay had brought into the world. And because of uh, sin, the consequences were that the whole of creation was subject to frustration and to decay as we see in verse 19, where it says, the creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. The power that raised Jesus Christ is the power that does set free creation from the Bondage to decay, it is the liberating power that liberates not only you and I to become children of God, but it liberates the whole of creation, hallelujah, so that what God had created as very good and therefore glorious will be restored, will be renewed because of the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead reversed the decay mechanisms. The power that raised Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, reversed what all matter physically in the physical sciences, in the physics and in the biology and in the chemistry is known to be the truth that every element that matter is made of is subject to radioactive decay. And decay brings about disintegration. And disintegration removes that which coheres in the image of God. And so the power of God that the Spirit of God exerted to raise Jesus Christ reversed that which is the natural and uh, cosmic reality of decay and rotting and destruction. So it is God's power that is able to cancel out the radioactive decay of matter that allows us to have the hope of living as glorified 
redeemed children of God. Not because of any human action, but because of the power of the glorious Redeemer. And this is why Paul was able to write and say, when you and I have Christ in us, we have the hope of glory. And that is the gospel that Paul talked about in Colossians chapter 1, where he said that this is a mystery that may not be understood by a kind of man, a person who does not understand the working of the Holy Spirit, a person who has not received the blessing of the gift of the Holy Spirit may not be able to understand this. But Paul says that you and I have this a mystery or this um, hard to understand in the human normal way by uh, his referring to what God did in Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. He says, I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the saints. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, hallelujah. Christ in me, Christ in you, by the presence of the Holy Spirit, the hope of glory is available for me and you to share. And we are charged by virtue of having this precious possession to proclaim Christ, to admonish and teach everyone with all wisdom, so that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. And Paul says in verse 29, to this end I labor, struggling with all his energy, which so powerfully works in me. The power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave, is available for you and I, dear children of God, to work powerfully in us as witnesses of Jesus Christ, so that we may be able to bring others into this knowledge of uh, Christ that Paul again <laughs> writes about in Philippians chapter uh, 2, where, chapter 3, when he's talking about the knowledge that he gained and the knowledge that he wanted others to possess. For he writes in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, But whatever was to my profit, I now consider us for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss, compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Verse 10, he says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. This is how Paul 
leads us to understanding the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. The power that allows us to know Christ and to know that it is through Christ that we access the righteousness that is not ours because scripture says in Isaiah that our righteousness is like filthy rags. But by faith, thank you, God, which is a gift, we are able to attain the righteousness of God through Jesus Christ. Remember, keep in mind the fact that the Holy Spirit is a gift of God, that faith is a gift of God. As Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 reminds us, we are saved by grace through faith. And that this is a gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. None of us, therefore, can boast about being joint heirs with Jesus Christ of that which belongs to God. And it is very significant when we understand that not only are we joint heirs of material possessions because Jesus Christ owns everything that is seen and unseen, but we are joint heirs in his status now, the status of righteousness, the status of being no longer subject to the evil one because he overcame him, he triumphed over him, he conquered him, he took possession of that which Satan used to uh, make us guilty when he died on the cross and when he rose from the dead, death that he had uh, endured on the cross. And so we should be grateful to God. We should be compelled by what he did, our gratitude to God is what should lead us to be witnesses to him uh, as Christ is the one who is our reason for being righteous in the presence of God. Colossians chapter um, 2 verse 12 says, when you were dead in your sins and in the and circumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, forgiving, having canceled the written code with its regulations that was against us and that stood opposed to us. He took it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of those forces triumphing over them by the cross. Praise the Lord. And so that is how you and I are to understand the power of God, beloved saints, and live and walk in that power, knowing that the Spirit of God is willing and available to enable us to live lives as children of God, joint heirs of what belongs to God. Let me pray. And my prayer is taken from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 to 21. This is my prayer. I pray also that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every 
title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Yes, may that power that God exerted to raise Jesus Christ, his son, from the grave, may that power be given to us as we witness for Christ. May that power enable us to remain humble and remain repentant, seeking through faith the forgiveness of our sins and the receiving of the righteousness that is a gift from God. I pray that God will be glorified in our lives as we live, demonstrating that it is not by our human power, it is not by any uh, man-made power, but that it is by the power of the Holy Spirit that we are who we are as children of God. I pray this in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, and God be with you. Amen. Uh, thank you very much, Reverend Ben. Um, let us uh, pray, a quick prayer again. Uh, Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your mercy, Lord, by which you give us your Holy Spirit. Father, King of Heaven, and that want to thank you, King of Glory, for uh, Reverend Dr. Ben, uh, for using him powerfully, King of Glory, to minister to us. Mighty Father, King of Glory, we pray, King of Heaven, and that uh, this word, King of Heaven, and that, O oh Lord, will continue, King of Heaven, and that in our spirits where it has been planted, King of Glory, that it will continue to grow, Lord, and bear much fruit, Mighty Father, King of Glory, Lord, King of Heaven, and that we pray, Lord, that by that same power, King of Glory, of that raised Christ from the dead, Lord, by that power of your Holy Spirit, King of Glory, that you restore, King of Glory, that you renew and revive all things, King of Heaven, and that in our lives that have died or that are dying, mighty Father, King of Glory. So we surrender to you, King of Glory, the things in the church that have died, the things, King of Glory, in our families, in our lives, King of Glory, in our communities, mighty Father, King of Glory, that have died, oh Lord, that you restore, Lord, that you will revive, mighty King of Glory. We thank you, King of of heaven and that the oh lord because you are good O oh lord we ask you king of heaven and that to grow draw us closer to king of heaven and that help us lord to continue to live in communion with your spirit king of heaven and that lord we give you praise we thank you mighty father king of heaven and that we bless your name king of heaven and that we magnify your name O oh lord we exalt you in Jesus' name we pray amen um amen. i'm going to request i'm going to request you reverend uh, ben to give us um the priestly benediction. Okay. Beloved children of God, may the Lord God light your way as he shines the light of his countenance upon you. May his angels be your security detail, escorting you and leading you and surrounding you. May the power of the Holy Spirit become a source of strength for you and I as we serve the Lord in this world. And may the peace of God that surpasses human understanding keep your hearts and minds safe and secure in the knowledge and the love of God, our Father and His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that come without any sorrow escorting them from the throne of grace where Christ is seated, interceding for us, be ours to possess, be ours for the church to possess. May the blessing be there for this nation to uh, thrive in, May the blessings of God be available for our children who are still in school. And may the blessings of God 
bring us prosperity, health, and joy in our knowledge of him now and forevermore. Amen.